Juana Meneses was born in Caracas, Venezuela, and has spent her formative years in Bogota, Colombia. Her work explores identity construction within immigration and surveillance systems, cultural transplantation and dislocation, as well as notions surrounding portability and mobility. She has spent the last 10 years in Los Angeles, where she received an MFA from Cal Arts in 2006. She was awarded the Public Art Project in the Los Angeles Air International Airport in 2010 by the Los Angeles Cultural Department. She has been published in the LA Times and New American Paintings, as well as having been awarded a Dorothy Foundation grant. She is one of the two founding members of the artistic collaboration, Meneses and later Kramer, and she recently wrote relocated to Miami in 2012, where she currently lives with her husband and daughter. And, and that collaboration is what is happening tonight at the Art Lab, so that's their partners on that. Layla Leder Kramer is an interdisciplinary artist based in Miami, born in Bariloche. How do you say it? Bariloche. Bariloche, Argentina. She studied architecture and industrial design at the University of Design, Architecture, and Urbanism in Buenos Aires, Argentina. In 1999, she settled in the US, where she received her BA in interdisciplinary studies from Godard College, Vermont. Important exhibitions include Dudon, New York, Museum of Contemporary Art, North Miami, Association of Icelandic Visual Arts in Reykjavik, Iceland, and at the Miami Art Museum. She was the recipient of the South Florida Cultural Consortium Fellowship for Visual and Media Artists. And since 2013, Layla and Juana have been working together as a collaborative duo, and their socially engaged practice ranges from curatorial productions, artist commissions, participatory art projects, and art and design platforms. And they have created uh, the Portable Editions Project as well as the Micro Publishing Operation. So we have our own practice, and Leila um, has her, her own practice as a photographer as well. So we, within our practice, you know, we do something very specific, but about um, a year and a half ago now, right, uh, we started working together, and we have this very um, organic sort of collaboration, and that's basically what we're going to talk about today. We're going to tell you about our collaboration, sort of how it works, how it takes us to unexpected projects, because it really does. <laughs> it's very, um, it's yeah, very We work organic. in a very organic way. Uh, we knew each other, we met, and we started working, both separating our own practices, but then, uh, yeah, we discovered that we have so many things in common, and we started pursuing these different projects that led us, of course, here, and all our different interests, that it's bigger than just making art just being in a studio, it, it, it is more than that for us. Yeah, so um, it's, it's, it's more than that, and it's, it was really, because again, we, we do have our own practice, and we, um, we, we make work in, in these particular ways, um, we, with, um, with our collaboration, we really found that it was an opportunity to be able to do um, things in different ways, right? So one thing that we really, you know, when we were planning this talk and, and, and just you know, wanting to highlight a couple of things, one of the things that is really important, I think, about our practice, because now we have this other practice, right? We have our own practice, and now we have this other practice together, is that one, um, you know, we, we, we hardly see each other yeah, yeah, that's uh, physically. It. Yeah. We, um, we are, and what I mean by that is that the flexibility of, of the practice itself, you know, we, um, you know, we have this huge um, Dropbox file that we work with. We are constantly kind of on the go. We have our separate, separate offices, um, and you know, we, we're brainstorming um, these things, and we're talking, you know, obviously on the phone, we're texting, we're, and as we're dealing with, you know, Layla has her, uh, she has a full-time job, I teach, we do a million things, and so part, I think, and I, and I honestly believe that part of the energy of the practice that we have together comes with, um, sort of juggling all these other things um, at, at the same time. Right. So, but it's really being really wanting to uh, accomplish um, these goals and these um, these projects that we set set up for ourselves, right. basically. So basically, again, we are both artists, visual artists. That's how we started, if you will. 
but started working together, open this different, like this huge difference of possibilities that one, here we are listening it. So like as one I mentioned, we do work in a very flexible and mobile platform, which is our practices together, this uh, collaboration duo. And within that, we are visual artists, but we're also curators. And we also produce uh, you know, events slash big projects. And well, we'll talk more as we go, but we also are publishers somehow. And we're also you know, editors. So our practice end up being, as we understand it now, and this, the idea of visual artists, plus all the different hats that we're using, that fulfills all the things that we want to do in terms of our mega culture practice. Right, right. So very much seeing ourselves as cultural producers and never saying to ourselves, you know, that doesn't fit within this framework. It's actually completely the opposite. It's, oh, okay, we want to produce X, Y, and Z. Sounds good. How do we do that? And, and, and taking, um, you know, that, that project forward. The other thing that we should say is that, and we, we've thought about this a lot also, is that we do also have all of this other experience in arts administration um, and other curatorial practices, we, we, you know, what we've done before we, before we met. So we have those tools are at disposal, but I think what's key about it is that we are so curious about um, you know, these projects that we engage in that it never for a second stops us to, to think, oh, we haven't thus done this before, or we haven't spoken to this particular person. We just go out and do it. So this idea of you know, modes of operation and being very much about, um, about doing something new the next time around is very much part of this, um, this whole idea. So, so really quickly, we're going to go through um, some of our past projects, and then we'll talk about the current project that we're engaged with here at the university. Um, and as you can see, it's, it's very varied sort of things. So the first one. So the first one, it was basically, again, us starting working together and having this sense that we wanted to work in community, basically creating our own venue because uh, we found ourselves on a town or on a space that we didn't have a venue where we can do things. So we, uh, we decided to create an art installation that it's the venue, right. where we ended up uh, exhibiting and showing and selling our work, and that venue is portable, as you see here. Right, and then the, to give you a little bit of context, so this was during Basel last year, we're, of course, we're based in Miami, so you can imagine the amount of uh, <coughs> things that happened uh, during Basel. So what we decided to do, we were working with our centers in Florida on Lincoln Road, Miami Beach. And what we did is we had access to all of these artists right within the center. And we basically curated artists into this installation, which um, actually was, a, it was an architect from Los Angeles, Lisa Van Leer. She designed, well, we invited her, right, to design this um, particular um, installation, right? And as Leila said, part of the discourse of this, um, of this installation was that it was portable. Because actually, you know, that has to do a lot with well, what's, what happens with the fairs, right? So it's an echoing of that particular week of this mobility, um, of all of these people that descend on Miami, in Miami Beach, and so it's this idea of, okay, we are going to create that same, we're gonna echo that same, uh, those same events. So, so that's, you know, that's why we made this, and so you can see, you know, where it works. This is also a very, um, physical type of endeavor. We yes. are just us yeah. trying to put all this together. So from scratch, we uh, drafted the, the actual installation, I mean, we, we started building it ourselves from scratch. Right. And uh, pretty much we did everything in this long from the design one. Yeah, and this long distance collaboration with, um, with Lisa Van Leer. So here we are, then we start getting all of the artwork that we curated into this, into this um, um, movable retail space, basically. And um, we also um, made a catalog for the, for the project as well. So again, just this was our first one, and we're just like, okay, great, we're making this thing. It's very organic. It's, um, you know, it has some aspects. And if you see, you start to see that it has some, a lot of aspects of our own personal practice, right? right? You know, we have interest in mobility and transportation and all this kind of stuff. These things do show up in our work, in, in our work together. Um, just, you know, it just mani they manifest in different ways, which is interesting, I think, for us um, to see it sort of created in this other 
in this other way. So here you go, there's Layla and the bike and Lincoln Road and there's the installation. So it's very, again, like there's a lot of energy in it and it's very um, sort of of the moment. We're also very um, uh, just kind of willing to make this thing and you know see how it goes and then also discard it. So right. we're not married to anything. Exactly. That's very important. And also, you know, on making this, it's a lot about the response. Yeah. A lot about, okay, we are making this crazy thing that people didn't understand back then, which it was a bicycle, it's movable, it's portable, it's a store, it's an art installation, uh, and okay, that's our yeah. uh, crazy idea, but people responded really well, yeah. and there was nothing like it right. back when we sort of started it. Yeah. So, um, and in conjunction with that, then we also had a, at the same time, we had a, a, a show that basically documented where some of these ideas were coming from. Because of course it wasn't just you know coming out of thin air, it, a, a lot of it came out of, uh, I'm Colombian, Leila's Argentinian, we, you know, we've seen a lot of these carts in the streets of our country. So, so really just kind of documenting and taking that idea apart. So you can see, like we really literally put so the we went, together. We went all out in this exhibition and we documented the process, but we also talk about, yes, this, very contemporary way of, okay, this is where we come from, this is the process, but also we made that um, sculpture. I yeah, say. yeah, so we, we end up making things together as well. Okay, so then that, you know, we did that, it was it was what it was, and so um, there's, a, there's a festival in Miami called Old Miami, it's in April every year, it's a poetry festival. It's really great, it's fantastic, it's everywhere, there's lots of events in Miami, and so we, we made a proposal. Um, to a Miami, and we, again, we're very interested in this, um, well, in identity, of course, and in Miami, in, in sort of getting to more specific, more tangible um, histories and stories of Miami. More tangible <coughs> results, actually, because we talk about this sense that Miami is a place where you have people from all over, but there is not a, a sense of what Miami is as a town, or what people uh, feel of what their identity is. So with that in mind, we wanted kind of like concrete proof. Yeah, we wanted, we wanted to collect these anecdotes and these stories right. and these memories. Of course, then again, these ideas about home sort of cross over. Um, so we asked people literally to tell us exactly. about their journey to Miami. So we made these cards where they could literally tell us how they got to Miami or if they were born in Miami what their experience of Miami and home is. And basically, and you know, we, we got a million different things. We basically were just going to, we went up to about 10 different neighborhoods in Miami, very much open to see what people told us, yeah. right? And we set up our little amazing. table, we just put the cards. So like Juana mentioned, on one side you have a map, and we were inviting people to draw on the map, and on the other side, uh, we have two prompts, one in English, one in Spanish, where people would write whatever they think. It wasn't about, uh, say something that we wanted to hear, it was more yeah. about tell us anything you want. Yeah. And some people even draw on it. We, I don't think we have examples here, but we went <coughs> with our little table to a different neighborhood yeah. inviting people to fill the cards. Uh, and people connected it. We were amazed of the response Which again. Is, yeah. Because again, this very crazy idea, it's very complex. We work all these different things that are in some way layered, complex, that it's a mixture of our own practices, plus, like Juana mentioned, this is part of all Miami Poetry Festival, so it was related with words as well. Right, right, and, and very, very open-ended, right? Kind of creating a framework and then just kind of go with it. Right. So um, at the same time, we did that, and then we also, um, the idea was that we would create small scenes so in one neighborhood, we would collect some stories, we would select, we would edit some of those cards, put them in a small zine, and then in the next neighborhood, we would exchange it and give it to um, the people that participated, sort of as a, a thank, thank you, you right, exactly. for participating and for sharing their, their memories with us. So we started to make this, you know, these small publications. We made about seven or eight of them all together. So again, you can start to see, you know, the book sort of creeping in, right? <laughs> um, and our interest, again, sort of overlapping without us even thinking about it too much because again, we, we, we just sort of let things um, happen. Um, and eventually, actually, eventually, after, you know, we're, we have all these things going on, we actually, we have about, how many cards do we have? Like 300 cards, 300 ridiculous, cards, 400 yeah. cards. 
So we're actually going to make a book of, of, with all of these cards so people can read through these memories because they are, they are just amazing. These, these, some of these things people shared with us, uh, just really amazing things. So, so that's, that's that. Um, which then Take takes seat. us to here, right? To the, you know, to the project here um, at the university. And you know, we started talking, with, speaking with John, um, who was you know, very gracious about um, you know, offering us the space and all of this stuff. And so we're just like, well, we, we, we know we, we have this interest in books, which we both have separately. Right. Yeah. For, for years, and we kept talking about it kind of in the background, uh, again, with all these different projects happening at the same time, as you can see, the first one, the second one, the third, they were all different. And again, talking about books as, as in background being part of something that we knew we wanted to do. Right. An artist book in particular, right? Exactly. So artist whether books, they're yeah. single edition or single pieces, unique pieces, or edition pieces. So really wide, very, very open ended as to what that could be. Again, you see this kind of recurring, very open ended kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. So um, so what we decided to do was um, we you know, we, okay, we have the space, you know, all the stuff. And we, again, again, this idea that, um, you know, we're interested in also getting always to the bottom of something more about South Florida, right? Something more about being more specific about that. So this particular show, yeah, it has books or artist books as their main format. But then the other idea that, it, that is going through it is also this idea of all the artists in the show have either had residencies in South Florida, who grew up in South Florida, currently, li currently live in South Florida. So it's kind of starting to construct, in a lot of ways, the fabric of this artistic community. So there's, there's lots of different things happening, happening with it. So then, we, um, so, so you can see some of this. And, and please, I hope, I hope you do make it down there, because part of what we wanted was very much to sp speak about the format of the book and really think very widely also about that format and how diverse you know, what a book, book could be. Yeah. I mean, we... Exactly. We understand, you know, with all our talks, all the interest in artist book, that books are not just something that you read from start to end, something that you should flip over. It's, for us, it is an actual space, a space that it could be an exhibition space. Yes. And again, this idea of creating our own space where we, our collaboration can function, so the book for us is a format that is not only words, it's not only pages, it's this, I don't know, democratic, like we always talk about being democratic, yes. being accessible. We're talking about replicas, doubles, you know, editions of. Uh, so that gives different accessibility that you don't have when you go to see an exhibition. Yes, and we really, we very much think about this, the particular space of the book as a public space. So it's a portable public space. That name, that that whole um, sense of it being widely available, you know, democratic. So we're really, really, really very interested in this idea. So that's why also the reaching for these this particular kind of book. Right. Um, so you can so hopefully you'll you'll see there's there's takeaways. Actually, this is Toby Millman. She grew up in Miami and she currently lives in in Detroit. And so this particular piece is actually a lithograph that you can that, that goes away. It's a takeaway, so you can take it with you. Just lots of different kinds of, of formats and books that um, you know we, we do hope you'll explore. What we are very interested to is that the artist books for us are different to what many people think are work of art in itself. So it's not just a catalog of images right. that are part of a body of work, that it could be the case. This, we see artist books as artwork in itself. So a book <coughs> is a piece of art. Yeah, self-contained uh, artwork. And, um, and so, which, which, which this is what John was alluding to, this is Randy Berman's piece uh, between the art complex and the library. So as you're walking through, um, you'll see five different signs. And we really don't see any conflict, you know, including this piece in the, in the exhibit. For us, it's just another format and manifestation, possible manifestation of, of a book, let's say. So really, you know, again, um, exploring that idea. And, and again, because we, um, because again, we, you know, this, these, these projects very much come from a, a place of curiosity and wanting to do something new, we said to ourselves, well, excellent, you know, this is all about artist books, we have to, we have to publish them for the exhibit. I mean, we have to, there's, this is absolutely, this is the, the logical next step. 
Right. So um, what we were able to do with the very generous support of the university and John exactly. um, is to, to publish some of these books. We invited four artists, and we have, we're lucky enough to have some of them here, and we're definitely going to invite them to, to speak about their, their process today. Um, and so these are these books. When you see these, you'll see these are the publications. There's editions of 50 for this particular exhibit. And so we, we, we knew of these artists' um, practices. We invited them to to basically have to create this exhibition space within this particular format. We gave them a format and they were completely completely free to do whatever they wanted within that yeah. format. Yeah, we ended up approaching people that we understood. Uh, we, we actually think that did not have uh, a book done before, uh, at least this way, mm -hmm. and uh, we felt that their artwork would fit perfectly into this format. So we invited them to create, again, this, which is a specific done for, for the exhibition. Right, right. And so, um, you know, we had to find a printer, do all this legwork in terms of finding printers in Miami, educating ourselves, because again, we hadn't produced a book uh, of this kind before. So um, there you go, know, you write this part of the, well, let's just go for it. And so <laughs> here are the books. Um, and we're really proud of them, I think. Oh, we're yeah. really, very proud of that idea. And so what happened is that this project begets something else, right? Which is Portable Editions, which is a micro um, press operation, basically. We now founded, because of this, a small press operation in Miami, meaning that this is the first cycle that we are going to be producing, and we'll produce the next cycle in a few months. We're going to actually open up, uh, we're going to pick a few artists, and we're going to ask them to set up a proposal, submit proposals to us for the next cycle of books. So now, not only are we, you know, have this curation and this platform that we create, where we create and we curate uh, projects, but now we also have this micro uh, press operation in Miami. Yeah, so we call it that way because there is there is behind the publishing world this seriousness about, oh, are you guys a press? Are you guys a publishing house? And we are trying, again, we, this is our own practice, uh, two artists working using these different hats, but that's why we call it in a sort of fun way, small or micro, uh, I don't know, press or yes. micro uh, publishing um, operation. Right, yeah. Because it's us, just it's very informal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so here you go, you have some samples of, of, of the books, and what we love about it is just the <coughs> And for us, it's a treat, right? It's a treat to be able to work with these artists, it's a treat to be able to see how they work. Um, it's, it's, it's fabulous, it's really, it's really amazing. So um, we were lucky that we picked up a, a very different kinds of, of work too, which is, which is really fun to, um, to see. And you can see um, within the show, when you go down to the gallery, you'll be able to see we, we have an art making station and we also were very cognizant of the fact that we wanted to make sure that you were able to see the process of how these books were created. So there's going to be, there's actually a lot more of these images where you can see, you know, some of these drawings, how they started, and what that process was in creating these books, right. these, these finished Yeah, you, you're not going to see just the books. You're going to see that for us, it's extremely important to show the process and to understand how from having artwork, you can, you know, move that and put it onto the book format which it's, it sounds or it seems super simple, it's not. It's extremely complicated. And this image is sort of give you a hint, a guide, an idea of how that happened. So, um, well, so in addition to that, we also have this other sort of fun um, addition to the exhibit, which is a bring a book, take a book. And this is actually here in the art complex. It's basically uh, intended to be a library that sort of moves around, but you can, if you bring a book, you can take any of the books that is in, in, in any of these two lockers as well. So that's just another um, sort of fun aspect to the, to the show that we put together. And then in addition to that, in addition to that, <laughs> yes, we have uh, this um, seat making station where you just can go there, grab materials that we brought and um, here at the gallery uh, put together also. And also the background you can see the process notes, plus support material, different senses of paper, uh, different senses of formats, and other publications, so you can have a sense. 
And we're inviting everybody, and please do go there and grab a piece of paper, look at the, the material and create a book. And a book could be from a folded piece of paper yes. to whatever else you want to take home, draw, uh, photocopy, yeah. and just, you know, be all crazy and just, you know. Yeah. We have a lot of small little samples that you can take a look and you can, you can see, you know, what we're intending. And you can see right here, this pedestal, um, you can actually drop a book in here because actually we're going to have an exchange, a book exchange of all of these pieces on November 7th, which is the closing. Um, so, it, you know, hopefully you fill, you know, this, this thing up and we can have this, um, this exchange of these books that you've made. Because definitely part, of, again, of this whole idea for us is involving, involving the university, involving the communities where we make these books. I mean, you can see all of our projects have some kind of piece in them where they involve the, the rest of the community. So, um, so yeah, so you know, hopefully, hopefully you participate. And so, as we were saying, we're lucky that we, we do have uh, a few of the artists that are in the show here with us today. So we have, we have Amalia Caputo over here, and, and we have Marina Fons. Which if you guys want to come up and you're going to talk a little bit about your process with the, with the book, they are uh, two of the artists that um, were participated in, the, in the, one of the publications that we, that we did for the, for the show. Is it okay so, if I turn the lights on? Yeah, please. Okay. Thank you. Yes. So uh, Marina <coughs> and Malia, they're both accomplished visual artists. They both have yes. their own practices. Uh, we admire them a lot. Yes. And that's something that I always tell uh, Amalia. And we, they have worked together on this collaboration for some, some time. And we thought that their project was great to put into a book. So we would like for you guys to, you guys to talk about <laughs> the process. Well, um, we were invited by this cultural center in, in, in Miami called the Arts and the South Florida Arts Center uh, to do an exhibition together. And uh, we were traveling at the moment, so we started um, organically communicating as we do today through images, text messages, emails, etc. So uh, it ended up that we were sending our ideas in, in the form of photographs, so we started to create this whole exhibition that was named um, Correspondences. And, and we used different formats. We used, we did installations, we did photographs, we did, um, and then it so happened that we had a little baby come out from that exhibition called uh, Insta Correspondences because we had a hashtag done in, in, in the platform of Instagram and we started uh, to communicate visually with no kind of, um, Restriction. Whatever we wanted to hang or shoot or think, we were doing it through images, and we're both photo-based artists, so it was a very, um, very easy thing for us to do, and uh, it was very organic as well. We didn't need to establish a routine or a number of images or a frequency. It was just happening, and it's happened since then. And we were thinking basically about how. Uh, we're changing the way we talk to each other uh, through our new technology uh, implemented uh, lives. And so by this, we're thinking also about how we use, you know, the, ph the photograph is substituting somehow the postcard or the written letter or, um, you know, a different tempo in the construction of messages between people. So we decided to um, to give it also, we were thinking about this super highway of images that is constantly growing and disappearing because what you see today in the Instagram, you won't see what you, like, somebody hung, like, uh, eight months ago because it's a super flow uh, a highway fast, of, yeah. of images being produced. So we decided, how? Huh, let's go back and let's look at this work that has been uh, hung constantly for a year and we started to do physical installations and like um, very organically too, right? right? Like yeah, we wanted to materialize this ephemeral, you know, images that this, the materialization that we see now of the images this is something that they go fast. You know, you see them today, so uh, we print them in the format that you see them in Instagram, which is a, a square print, and created an installation. Yeah, and it's been uh, growing in the sense that we had the first installment in the art center, then we were invited by this uh, um, <coughs> a 
alternative, alternative art yeah, art space in Miami, and we did the second installment. And it happens that we're, we already had a visual conversation, but it turns out that when they're physical, they become a different conversation. And when we hang them in the walls, we are kind of doing an, a very intimate performance because we're looking at all the work and then we're hanging them. So it happens to be like we're using images and words to, and, and always organizing them in a different way. So we had one in Buenos Aires last summer, and this is our fourth installment. And Juana and Leila were so kind to invite us to have uh, to participate in this project, which would give another further step to our project, meaning that we could have the exhibition, uh, the project, the Instagram materialize in the form of a book, which also for us is kind of having a little exhibition in its self-contained so yeah and you'll see it, it's a beautiful installation down at the art lab you'll see it it's fabulous and so it, when you see it i think and, and after what they've said it makes a lot of sense to see then the book for us to, to you know to invite them because it's just like you know it's a perfect fit for them to extension for them to do that so